if you just explain what your role is, I know you've got one of the longest job titles in the world, but uh, can you explain what your new role is in layman's terms to, to the supporters? Yeah, so uh, it's general manager of football operations um, alongside the academy director's role. So what that means is really uh, coordinating all aspects of the football and program um, from the academy all the way through to the first team. Uh, it allows me to work very closely with Paul um, and obviously the existing relationships that I have with Brian and the academy staff and, and, and hoping to cement and, and make them closer together. Um, not that they've ever been far apart, but I think it's important that the way that the club's going in the future is that we can actually work on that uh, embedded philosophy all the way through um, and then try and make sure that I can deal with all aspects outside of you know, the day-to-day -day picking of the team and the operation around the games program. Um, I can help Paul and the, and the first team staff with any issues that they might have um, in and around the club on a daily basis. What's been the, the kind of driving force behind creating this role? Because obviously it's a new role. Um, it was it Marcus? Was it Paul? How's, how's, how's it come about? I think it's something Marcus has been thinking about for a while um, in relation to how the football aspects of the club um, operate. Obviously, we have two sites. We have Portman Road and we have the, the training ground. Um, and I think the idea being, obviously, the footballing side of things operate out of here, out of the training ground. So for, to him, for him to have somebody that can actually, you know, he can communicate with and, and, and ask questions around what's going around with the football and what our plans are, and how things are communicated um, with the first team um, is, is really important for him. I think obviously he has his own thoughts on how and, and, and he wanted to make changes and he has made changes obviously over the last few months, um, but making sure there was some stability around the club. Um, you know, it happens season upon season when clubs make changes that the infrastructure or the plans tend to move from one stage to another. I think it's important for Marcus that we have a plan uh, and we're trying to follow that plan all the way through the club. Can be the, the main difference is that it's going to be more on the football side. Why has the club not had somebody on that side before? Um, it's a good question. We we haven't really had someone in previous management. They've they might have taken on aspects of that role themselves. Um, and I think to have the consistency all the way through it allows you know, necessarily someone outside of that framework that's not picking the team every week. Um, you know that again can help with like I said with that if you want the philosophy, um, both myself and Brian, for example, have, have been with the club for a, quite a long time um, and, and know the area and, and know what, what it's about to, to be part of Ipswich Town Football Club um, and the passion, the desire, both from the, the, the staff's point of view and obviously the fans' point of view. Um, so I think having that and seeing and being around quite a lot of managers um, in that, that time, if you want, um, it allows him to be able to, to, to access on myself if he needs to and, and other coaches as well. What will be the main differences then when, when you're down and being that conduit between the manager and the owner, what will be the main differences that you can see? I think the main differences is probably on a daily basis I would sit down with Paul. Um, you know, we, we talk every day, every, every, every possible occasion. Um, we, we obviously go through things in the morning first thing. Um, there's areas of his job that I can help him with and it allows him to make you know, his job a little bit easier if you want and in dealing with the, the players obviously which is the most important part for him and the team. Um, making sure that we can continue to drive standards I think on and off the pitch as well. So there's things that I'll be looking at that can help him with you know for example the infrastructure around the training ground. Uh, making sure the departments are on top of um, different areas that we're working on for example the performance analysis, the medical department, the sports science, uh, work on all those areas and making sure that each of those heads of departments are you know, striving to make things better um, uh, within their own right. What qualifies you to take this role? People mm. maybe ask why you, why not somebody, you know, Terry Butcher's name's been floated about, people mm. that have you know, played the game for a long, long time. I know you're a scholar here and mm. you've, you've kind of come through the, the ranks almost working here, but mm. what qualifies you to take on such a, a vital role at a big club? Yeah, listen, it's a very fair question, I think. Um, I don't think there's a, a textbook to say there's a qualification you need to do this job. Um, you could have the most academic person in the, in the world, if you want, that's got all of the coaching qualifications and academic qualifications, and maybe not have so much experience. Or you can have the other side of things, somebody who's got you know, several hundred games for the first team, played internationally, but doesn't understand how to implement all of that, if you want, knowledge into the football environment. Um, I've got a bit of a mixture of both. Obviously, I have nowhere near play to the level of those names that you've mentioned. Um, my career was very short in relation to the youth plan side of things, but what I had gone away is, is worked incredibly hard in, in relation to understanding how, um, if you want people learn and develop, 
that's both at, at a junior level and obviously at a senior level as well. And I think what I've managed to do and, and probably the reason why I've been given this opportunity um, is that I've uh, you know, built a relationship with Marcus uh, and other people at the club to show what I can do uh, and I'm, I'm grateful for the opportunity that I've been given. Um, it's a massive job, there's no doubt about that. Um, and obviously, like I said, it's something that I am um, looking forward to getting my you know, teeth stuck into and, and working on those issues that the club needs to do to improve and move forward. Um, in my eyes, uh, I think only time will tell. Um, I'm very confident that I can work with Paul and, and any manager, for that matter of fact, to, to help deliver what the plan is for the club going forward. Obviously, Ian Milne left on the, the other side of things in January. Do you now fill into that role or is the, the MD role still something that, that needs to be filled? Because, again, that is a massive role in being a conduit from the, the club side of things to, to the owner. Mm. As I explained earlier on, really, in some of the other press um, interviews, I think Marcus himself has taken some direct responsibility of some of the roles that, that Ian was undertaking as part of his role as managing director. So where he stepped in and he takes more of a hands role on, um, there's areas obviously at the club, the commercial side of things, the financial side of things that people have stepped up in their relevant heads of department role and obviously doing more in that area. Um, my role is not to, to replace Ian Milne. Um, Ian's role is very different to the role that I'm doing now. Um, there are aspects of his job that I will be involved in, but I was involved with Ian at the same process. So um, I think it's something Marcus will generally have a look at. Um, and as I said, he's having that more hands-on approach to look at all of the areas of the department. If he feels that he needs to bring in somebody that can um, help deliver uh, aspects of the roles that maybe other people aren't fulfilling or we want to make progress in, then I'm sure that's something Marcus will consider over the, you know, the near future. But at this moment in time, I think it's, it's for him to get his hands on and have a look at that role. Yeah, we spoke briefly about it uh, earlier on and, and the club's been criticised quite a lot for not having football people. In, in prominent positions at the club. Do you now change that, given your role? I think there's quite areas. So people talk about the director of football, um, you know, technical directors and all of those types of things. Um, those titles obviously exist at other football. Everyone works individually, if you want, on those different roles. Um, we obviously have Dave Bowman uh, as our director of football, who's heavily involved in the recruitment side of things, who brings a, a wealth of experience, if you want, in that area of player understanding and player knowledge of you know, the, the adult side of things. Um, you've got Brian Klug, obviously, who's had got 35, 40 years experience of coaching uh, and knowing the development of young players. So I think we've got those people in and around the building who know the club um, and know what the club needs going forward. Um, as I said, my role is slightly different to, to both of those roles. It's about bringing it all together and trying to make sure that, that, that we're staying on top of all of those areas uh, and looking at how we can make improvements and what that might look like going forward. Obviously, you mentioned there earlier on you were academy director as well. Is that not a role that, that probably needs full-time attention as well? Yeah, it, it's, a, it's, a, it's a great role. It's a role that I absolutely love, um, you know, working with the academy. I'm very fortunate, though. We have a lot of really, really good staff here at the club. Um, you know, so although I you know, was the academy director and I'm the academy director, that doesn't change. We have a number of people that have, you know, if you want some increased responsibility in their given roles. Um, so it allows them to, to step up and bring new ideas. Um, so what I think that does is allow growth at the club to help with those you know, people who've been in roles for, for a period of time to, to step up and do other things as well. Um, it's definitely something that I want to stay involved in. Uh, I'm very passionate about the youth of the club and I feel it's an important um, strategic long-term long plan for the club really to understand and how what young players are coming through and, and how we get them into the first team. So, um, you know, that there are other people within the academy set up, under 23s coaches, under 18s, under 16s, you know, that do more. Um, and with that process, is allowing them to, to develop as well. As you mentioned, their long-term strategy, how much is a kind of driving force has Paul Lambert been behind that? I know Marcus has obviously been the owner of the club, but how much has Paul Lambert had to kind of say in that? Yeah, I think the academy has always been a focus, um, well, ever since I can know that the academy has been a focus for the club, uh, if you want a pillar. Um, it's always difficult when you're developing players, um, you get them to a point and, you know, at some point the, the manager of the football club has to pick them uh, and has to put them in that environment and, it, and it's not easy because playing in the championship is a brutal league and, you know, for them not to have experience going into that it, it is a risk. Um, so whatever level you look at, the manager involved at the football club um, you know, has to look at the academy side of things, 
we've been very fortunate over the, you know, the last five or six years that all of the managers involved have looked at young players. Um, and I think our, my conversations with Paul, obviously, he's been very impressed with the younger players that we've had at the club. Um, it's now, like I said, embedding them, if you want, into the team, in and around experienced players that can help them. Um, you know, because it's, it's hard for them when you put them straight in and there's a lot of them at the, at the same time. Um, you know, they're not going to necessarily develop as quickly as what we would have liked. So uh, we have to look at that whole process and, and look at the building blocks around them that can help these young players. Is this a new long-term strategy or has it, you know, because obviously Marcus came out with a five-point plan, is that still being implemented? Is that still being worked with? Yeah, like I said earlier on, the, the academy has still always been part of the, the, the plan if you want. Um, if you want now with my role, it's enabling the conversations to happen on a daily basis. Like I said, with the, the manager, um, with Brian, like I said, we talk all the time, every day, about what players we've got and what players are coming through um, and how that might fit into the senior team and looking at you know, what the squad might look like now, in a year's time, in two years' time, um, and making sure that we can do everything around that squad to help those young players and the experienced players at the same time. It is unfortunate, obviously, we're in the position we're in, um, but at the same time, that brings opportunity for, for growth and obviously change, and, and people have to look at it that way. At the moment, you know, Paul's done a fantastic job and his team, it, you know, from when we came in and the situation was where it is, um, so when he's come in and his situation where it is, but to t turn that around or, or try and put new things in place to make it better, they take time. Um, it doesn't happen overnight. So when we're talking about long-term planning, you would have seen we've addressed some of the issues quite quickly. Some of the issues will take longer. Um, and, and no doubt about it, everyone who's, who's employed at the club at the moment will do their utmost to try and make sure we can address those, those areas of concern, if you want, or things that we've highlighted could be better. What's your role now on a, on a match day? We've seen you at Norwich after Paul had been sent to the stands and you were, you were sat next to him. What is it you do in that kind of situation? I think on a, on a, a match day in particular, again, I'll go and see the, the manager before the game and, and go through anything. Um, obviously, Marcus is there just about every game. Um, and it might be going through the communication side of things about necessarily game plans and what we're trying to do. Um, and then, obviously, speaking to the opposition senior staff as well and building up those levels of communication across the club so that we have points of contact to talk to about various different issues. It might be that we have an existing loan player or we're looking at a business part of the, the club um, and you know listening to other senior staff and how they do things and, and talking to them. Um, so on a match day it's quite you know quite comprehensive if you want there's a lot going on um, and obviously my role is then to look at how we can explain that, obviously when the game's going on, what that looks like um, uh, from a day-to-day -day point of view. Without giving it all away, we've talked about young players and the, the long-term um, long strategy, but what, what is the long-term strategy outside of the bringing the young players through? I think the long-term strategy obviously too is to, to, to get the club you know, in a position where we can be um, you know, striving to, to the higher leagues if you want, to, to the Premier League. That's obviously every club's um, long-term strategy if you want. I think if you look at the routes that we're putting in place to try and do that, we've got to look at a, a methodology that's slightly different to other clubs. Um, so for us, a focus, a key focus is on the younger players and making sure that we can bring them through. Um, not too quickly that we give them everything that they need to, to nurture them in that environment so that they can flourish. Um, and it's something that really have to, we have to look around, not just the youth, it's about the, you know, getting the right experienced players around them to, to support them so that they can perform out there on a, on a Saturday or a Tuesday. Given the finance in the game, how important is it for a club like us that maybe doesn't have that financial power to go a different route and really try and, and nurture those players? Yeah, it's huge. Um, it's a big, you know, big part of our plan, if you want, in relation to how we operate. We don't have the luxury of going out and spending several million pounds on players, you know, during the transfer windows. Um, you know, Paul's made it quite clear that in relation to the, to the loan market, we, we want to try and re reduce that where possible. So we've got to look at what that looks like for us. Um, um, we do think we've got some good young players. Um, they're in no way in shape or form, you know, um, consistently ready for the first team every week. Um, that's just not a, an area that we're there just, th just yet, but we're putting things in place, again, that can help them. Um, and all you can do is give the young players an opportunity, and once the manager gives them an opportunity, it's up to them to repay the manager and, and find some consistency in their performances. If they manage to achieve that, then obviously they'll get a run of games in the first team. 
as I said earlier on, it's difficult the position that we've been in now, more so because you know you don't have that luxury. Um, you know, performances and development are, are always a, a hot topic of debate. Um, you know, development side of things, you do give people more time. Performances necessarily, they do have to come quite quickly because we need points. Season ticket renewal times coming up. There's a little bit of uh, uncertainty regarding where we, which league we'll be playing in. But mm -hmm. is there any news on that as to when it could be and and anything beyond that? I think it will be in the near future. It is, uh, like I said, a topic that's been um, not just addressed now, if you want. It's, we've been looking at it since, you know, for the last two or three months, if you want, um, listening to, to various different people from obviously previous seasons about things and decisions that we've made. As I explained earlier on, really, Marcus is having a key role in this um, part of the club, in the commercial side of things, and looking at, you know, what we can do to, to give something back to those supporters. We really, really appreciate everything they've done for us. Um, not just now, okay, it's about what they've done over a period of time. I think it's great at the moment how they've helped to be that 12 man, um, that's existing season ticket holders and that's, that's people coming up and supporting on match days. So I think, you know, that we will be making announcements soon on that. Um, the consultation process that is, is being quite lengthy um, and I think it's an area that we can look at obviously addressing very quickly. Again, the manager's been a massive part in that, hasn't he, in, in trying to uh, fill the ground as much as possible. Yeah, listen, it really helps the players out. Um, you know, both him and I, if you want, have met lots of groups of supporters, as have other members of staff in the club as well, and tried to, to listen to them and, and try to, like I said, we won't be able to address everything or every part of their concerns immediately, but we're trying to listen to, you know, what they want as much as what we need and what we want. And, and somewhere you meet each other halfway down, you know, the middle if you want, and we get a common ground. And I think when those people who have been to the games have seen the atmosphere, it's electric and, and you know it's been great for the players to, to walk out to the atmosphere. Um, I know the manager enjoys it, the staff enjoy it, the players enjoy it and actually the comments that I've received from other supporters in and around the stadium, they enjoy the atmosphere. So it is we're all in it together um, and, and hopefully things will turn very quickly. Obviously we've had a few cheaper ticket games which a handful of season ticket holders have voiced their frustrations at group. What have you got to say to, to them in regards to that? Yeah, I think it's an area that we've all, you know, looked at in relation to we are speaking to the season ticket holders. We appreciate, you know, that they have they are the ones that have committed their time, if you want, and finances to the club, you know, earlier on the season. Um, but I think the, the the main feedback that I've had, even from existing season ticket holders, they actually appreciate more people coming into the stadium and some of the promotions the club has looked to do to to help get people into the stadium and, and build that atmosphere. At the end of the day, like we all want the atmosphere to be better and in order to do that we do need to get people into the into the stadium. So um, we're not ignoring that situation. We are listening to it, but I think the majority of them have really, really supported what we've tried to do to get more people into the stadium. Just finally, how do you feel about the future of the football club? potentially going into League One next year, you know, how do you feel about the future of the football club off the pitch as well? Yeah, first and foremost, again, people ask this quite a lot just recently, our focus is still staying in the Championship. That is what we want to do and we still definitely want to be here. Yes, we have plans in place for what could happen. Um, I'm very, uh, if you want, enthusiastic about what the future looks like for Ipswich Town Football Club. I think, um, you know, th th there is a lot of positives at this club. Um, there is a lot of areas that we're trying to improve. And, and that will take time, as I said earlier on. Um, I think the, the buy-in that we've got from, from the senior staff, the supporters and every other uh, employee at the club, you know, we are pulling in the same direction. Um, and I think given a period of time, that, that momentum, if you want, and the, the, the atmosphere around here will be better for everyone in the longer term when that looks like going forward. So uh, for me, I'm really excited. I'm excited about the role. I'm excited about how that looks for the club going forward. Um, you know, it is just one of those things that at this moment in time, it will take a little bit of time to embed those things going forward.